art references. They're great for quite a few reasons, but what's the best references and where can you find them? Well, that depends on what you want to create or learn. Let me explain. An artistic reference is simply any photograph, model, or rendering, or any other visual that you'd like to draw from. A reference can be followed exactly like in a portrait or loosely like for a pose or color scheme or clothing choice. You can have many references for one piece or just one. It all depends on the vision you're trying to bring to life. When it comes to finding images to reference, please note that the majority of images on the internet are covered under copyright laws and the legal property of the original makers, which is why most drawings from one specific source are usually a practice piece, but from multiple and artwork. If you're drawing digitally or just have a screen available, I highly recommend Pure Ref for all your collaging needs. It's great! It works like this. Within its window, you can import just about any image directly from the internet and collage them and align them together. So you want to draw a gal girl, but you like her hat, not her shirt, and you want a different shirt and outfit, you could collage a different selection of references and then hoist them together. But also, this function called Enable Windows Always on Top, where your window will always be on top. And you could change the size of the window and images however you like. And thus, it is a great software for gathering visual references. Especially since you can save the files and pages. Now we can gather all the references. Most use Pinterest, and yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty great. Real easy to search up things and almost whatever you want is there. Plus the algorithm is better than YouTube, and I'm willing to die on that hill. But Pinterest isn't everything and doesn't have everything. There are similar sites to it, like We Heart It, and sites where you can get inspired by those you like, like DeviantArt and ArtStation. You can find artists doing similar stuff to your own and add it to your style from real life photos and the draftsmanship of others. Personal sites I like are Pixababy for its pristine nature and architecture, photography, and pixels because you can sort by color. And last but not least is Line of Action clearly made by artists for artists. I'm going to make quite a few videos from this site for their free classes are great and I'm surprised I don't hear from more art tubers talking about it and praising it because it's really akin to that of an art school with his own little community and teachers. But wait, there's more. I have very specific goals as an artist, so I'm going a little extreme in my learning and application. Basically putting myself through art school and animation and film school. And you know what else school has? Books. I have a lot of art books to learn from, stay inspired and motivated by, and if I wasn't such a broke bitch with prodigal habits, I'd have many more. But before I go in an in-depth rant about arts and animation books, I want to mention the books that got me inspired on this creative path in the first place. Comics and manga. Comics are great and have some dazzling illustrations and colors that pop, but I f***ing love me a good manga. And to tell you just how great of a tool that is, I brought a friend along, Antero Arts. Take it away. A huge part of art and being able to make a satisfying piece is observation. Whenever I'm doing anything, going out to eat, going to work, whatever it may be, I'm always looking and always observing things. How would this look on paper? What type of drawing can I use this in? These are some of the things I ask myself when I'm looking at, I don't know, a fork for example. One of the great things about drawing cartoons and anime art is that watching anime and reading manga gives you plenty of material to observe and analyze, while also entertaining you. One author whose work I always reference is Yusuke Murata, and mainly his illustrations in One Punch Man. The drawings are incredible, and his understanding of anatomy and facial structure are truly top notch. When I first started drawing, I would constantly draw panels of Fubuki and Tatsumiki. Why? Well, apart from the obvious, there's a lot of anatomy sitting in front of you to learn. Even the male characters such as Garo and Darkshine have such detailed muscles and forms for you to study. Although, who even draws male characters these days anyway? Every new chapter that would be released, I would draw at least one or two of the panels from that chapter. And as I read, I would be taking mental notes. How's the ribcage formed? Hip dips, their collars. It's completely different drawing from a real life reference because you can see how an artist would draw certain features on the human body, as opposed to you trying to figure out where to put the lines yourself. Anyways, bottom line is read manga, watch anime. 
Though when you do, observe, take your mental notes, and keep a consistent practice. Thank you. And Tara Art, go check out his channel. I've bared witness to many great artworks and animations, and the world around me fascinates me endlessly. My dream is not just to be a comic creator or a writer, but also an animator and artist. So I made a detailed plan that will expand over the coming 15 weeks. But for now, let's get into the more advanced layer of artistic referencing. Beyond books, there's animation references. Then I want to make some great animations. Even better than Delapatapur. And I'm still learning the ropes. But here on YouTube, there's grandiose compilations of things to draw from, like Hob Sakuya, who does a fantastic job of shouting out not only the anime that the clips are from, but the individuals leading the visuals behind them. And many clips and compilations of humans in motion via hardcore parkour channels and channels that focus on stunt work and action choreography and especially on Instagram like Jam Movement and Breakdancers and on YouTube you could just look at you could simply look up the term Stunt Reels or watch The Corridor Crew Okay, back to books Undoubtedly, for me at least, the best series of books for references and motivation are the Art Of series, my favorite style of book as well, besides one with a narrative. If there's a major production that's art heavy, best believe there's probably a book all about the pre-production and art and story behind the scenes. Star Wars, Halo, Gears of War, District 9 even, Full Metal Alchemist, Avatar The Last Airbender, nearly every Studio Ghibli film and if not all, most Disney movies. It even goes further beyond into productions like DreamWorks. Yeah, that's right, there's a Shrek. Boss Baby, and even the Penguins have art books going behind the scenes. And I find those books, and especially the flipbook videos on YouTube previewing all the books that I can't buy, a priceless resource. Outside of those series of books, and a horde of actual how-to-draw books, which are obviously worthwhile, I have three giant Smithsonian books because I love knowledge. And it has pictures as a storyteller. Referencing the natural and human built world is a must, but I'm too poor to travel and too lazy to research and catalog every individual thingabajiggy that's in existence. Luckily for me and you, we don't have to. Lastly, for books, I say go with what and who inspires you the most. Learn from the things you want to do, the styles you wish to emulate, and many artists have their own sketchbooks to sell as well. But another favorite style of book of mine are animation books, especially 2D cell books. For example, this Jujutsu Kaisen book. It's helped me with many valuable things in an animator. And the animator survival kit, of course, has a bunch of info and practices. But the books you get should be tailored for you, especially if you're going to spend money, because there's plenty of free resources on the YouTuber and the internet itself. Now moving onwards towards the forbidden realm of references. Prawn. Just kidding. Kinda. There's many resources online and in person to find references for gestures to study from, from animals, to nude buddies, even here on YouTube. Plus, there's a horde of other artists making videos on how they implement references. So, you know, check out those too. Now, for the secret and forbidden layer of art references, tracing and emulation. But just in case, if I'm never a starving artist, there's always, But more than just that, to improve my own skills, I see no problems with tracing from reality or better artists for practice. And I have a three-step method I've already talked about. So let me tell you this last tip. You can screenshot YouTube. Akuna Matata. Again, thank you to Ontario Arcs. Go check out their channel. Take care.